Jesus. Lift up your hands, give him praise. again that you look much better than I thought you would this <laughs> you know when we are in church when we are, we are, we are always so stiff so one needs to break the atmosphere hallelujah amen and look at your neighbor and tell them that uh, this season I will not remain the same this season I will not remain the same God is about to bring a shift in my life. God is about to cause a shift in my destiny. God is about to cause a shift in my ministry. God is about to cause a shift in my business. Amen. I am trying to decide, I've been praying, whether I should share with you the battles that it took me to get here. You know, the Bible talks about um, where Paul said, I quoted that scripture yesterday, lad. I have fought the fight. I have run the race. And then he said, and I have what? Kept the faith. Many times to run your race, in fact, most times, you will have to fight the fight. But it is a good fight. And so I will see... If at the end, I'll talk about it very briefly. You know, I believe very, very strongly that the best of your life is in front of you. That amen wasn't loud enough. Yeah. And this afternoon, I want to share a message. I don't even know if it is a, I can't call it a sermon. It is something that God put in my heart. And it is something I really feel very strongly. If we, as it were, listen to it intently, not just with our ears, but with our spirits. And you will understand why in a short while. I sent a video, I don't know, very short clip. A few, have, you, have you guys got it? All right. So please get ready when I say ready. Turn quickly with me to two openings. The first is the book of First Samuel, chapter 3, verse 7 to 8. And it says... Now the boy Samuel ministered to the Lord before Eli. And the, word of the <coughs> and the word of the Lord was rare in those days. And there was no widespread revelation. And it came to pass at that time while Eli was lying down in his place. May you not lie down in your place. Yeah. And when his eyes had begun to grow so dim... May your eyes not grow dim. Amen. And when he could not see, may it never be said that you got to a point in your life where you could not see spiritually. Amen. And before the lamp of God went out in the tabernacle, uh, I pray by God's spirit that the lamp of God will never go out in your house. Amen. It will never go out in your life. Amen. It will never go out in your ministry. Amen. And then it says, uh, where the ark of God was, and while Samuel was lying down, you need to be careful who you associate with so that you don't catch their spirit. And then he says, Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, nor was the word of the Lord yet revealed to him. After this conference, Samuel will know God more. And the Lord called Samuel again. I've skipped some verses, okay? The third time, you and I know that this happened three times. And the Lord called Samuel again. <coughs> the third time, so he arose and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you did call me. Then Eli perceived. I am praying that after this conference, your perception will heighten. Amen. That the Lord called the boy. We'll leave it at that for now. The second scripture verse we're going to read very quickly is in the book of Acts chapter 12, verse 8. 
sorry, 12, from verse 8 to 15. It says, then the angel said to him, after this conference, you're going to begin to have angelic encounters. Yeah. You're going to begin to have angelic visitations. Yeah. The Lord told me that for the covenant nation, that this is your season of visitation. Yeah. Your next 30 years is going to be a season of divine visitations. Yeah. Gird yourself and tie on your sandals. That's what the angel told him. And he said, so he did. And he said to him, Put on your garment and follow me. Somebody is about to have receive new garments. Amen. You will follow the leading and the directions of the Lord. Amen. And when they were past the first and the second guard post, they came to the iron gate that leads to the city. And it opened, which opened to them of its own accord. I decree and declare, every, every gate and door standing in your way up until now will open of its own accord. Amen. Gates in this nation will open on your of their accord. Gates in industries will open to you. Gates within your regions will open up to you. Gates in your families will open up to you. And he says, and then they went out and went down one street, and immediately the angel departed from him, which means the angel did had done his own job. How many of you agree that he had, he had done his job? Verse 11 then says, And when Peter had come to himself, he said, Now I know for certain that the Lord has sent his angel and has delivered me from the hand of Herod and from all the expectation of the Jewish people. I decree and declare, every assignment against your life, every machination, Every evil expectation, every manipulation against your life, whether it be spiritual or it be physical, I decree and declare in the name of Jesus, you will be delivered from every one of them. You will fulfill your destiny in the mighty name of Jesus. And then he says in verse 13, And as Peter knocked at the door of the gate, a girl named Rhoda came to answer. Verse 14, when she recognized Peter's voice, because of her gladness, she did not open the gate. Somebody say, may God help me from Rhoda. <laughs> but she ran in and announced that Peter stood before the gate. But they said to her, you are beside yourself. May the Lord help me from the apostles that are praying. <laughs> You are beside yourself. Yet she kept insisting that it was so. And they said, it is his angel. May the Lord bless the reading, but more so the doing of his words. Let's bow our heads for a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, speak to our hearts, speak to our destinies, speak to our ministries. Open our eyes and do what only you can do. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. This afternoon, I'm going to be talking about recognizing your next move with God. Or if, if you want another title, it will be recognizing doors of opportunity. You see, I believe this is so key and significant that, in fact, um, it's almost like as though at every different, at different points in time, in different seasons, there are different emphases in the church. And we thank God because the church, especially the Nigerian church, is, is quite, quite prolific in prayer. When we start praying, you literally have to stop us from praying. Okay, you have to ring a bell or say, shh, shh, yeah? But we are not very great at recognizing the answers to prayer. Um, and I, 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 I say this because um, if you remember, I think it was yesterday, I talked about the fact that anytime I'm, um, um, I'm speaking to ministers, I think of, of five parameters. They're not all inclusive, neither are they conclusive, but they're the ones that I use. The first is size. So we talk about church growth. But I, I'm sure you know that a church can be a, a mile wide, 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 but an inch deep, which means... and 
so we can record large numbers, 20,000 people, but then, it, you know, a few years down the line, it's no more there. And then the second thing is speed. And we say, this is the fastest growing church in so, so, and so. And, and they're good things. And if, if the spirit of God is at work, these things will be at play. Um, but the thing about speed is that uh, speed going in the right direction is not a blessing, it's a curse. Go, that is not going in the right direction. The second is sustain, third is sustainability. I spoke about that yesterday. And then the third um, is, is it fourth? Sight or sensitivity. That is what I want to talk about today. The sensitivity of the church is very important. And when I talk about sensitivity, the power of sensitivity, it is important because if you don't have sensitivity, you will miss your day of visitation. Let me explain what I mean. <laughs> we see a situation... Um, Okay, let, let, me, let, let, me, let me use this example. I came in from um, England, I think it was on Monday. I came to the, got to the airport, and this is my country, so I, I, can, I can arrive and, and go anywhere I want to. But generally speaking, you know, any other country you go to as a guest, you know, there are protocol people waiting. So anyway, I knew there would be protocol people waiting for me here, but I didn't know where they will be and I didn't know who it will be, okay? So there are two ways, as it were, that um, a person meeting you at the airport can recognize you or you recognize them. It is either they are holding up a card with your name, isn't it? Or the second thing is, this is what happened this Monday when I landed. I noticed as I was coming out, you know, I just noticed someone I wasn't even looking for anybody, to be honest, because I knew my way. I just noticed somebody looking at me. Looking at me. I said, that was probably the protocol guy. And he kept looking at his phone. And then he did like this. <laughs> and then when, when he eventually came near me, I saw that he had a picture of me. It was a better looking picture than I am now, right now. <laughs> you know. So I could see why he was struggling a bit. What I'm trying to say is, Essentially, eh, eh, eh. the challenge with us is that we pray, yeah, and when our prayers arrive, we don't have a picture. Neither do we have a card saying, I am here. And so, and this has happened to me a number of times at some airports. Not all protocol teams are great that I will arrive, look, 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 look. We are close to each other. We are, and then I take my taxi and I go, and they say, sorry, sorry. I say, don't worry. The unfortunate thing is that your answers to your prayer will not be saying, where are you, where are you? Are you here? In fact, in this instance, with Peter, <laughs> he was locked in prison in prison, the people started a prayer chain and they prayed for, I don't know how long it was, continuous, night and day, night and day. And God, when you pray, God will answer your prayer. You know we don't have faith. We, th we think we have faith. Okay, let's put it, we, we have faith. We are growing. <laughs> yeah, but faith, I will show you what, what, what faith does, what faith really does. But we see here that they were praying, praying, praying in a room, and they kept praying, praying, praying. And then God sends an angelic visitation to break difficult chains, to bring this guy out. Even Peter himself was amazed. He said, this must be a dream. And then he saw, it is not a dream, it is an angel. And then the difficult things in the city, then the angel now, you know, brought him out, then he said, he did like this, I'm going, now you feel. You go and finish your work. There's a, there's a place that God will stop working. And then you need to start doing stuff. Many of us don't know that God has already answered our prayers. I am tell, we prayed yesterday, eh? so, those of you who were there yesterday. I am telling you, some of you, the moment we left that place, in fact, from there, the prayer has been answered. 
The problem is, will you recognize it when it comes? It was so bad that the, when Peter, who was the answer to the prayer, showed up at the door, <laughs> Rhoda locked it out. Many of us have locked the answers to our prayers out. You know why? Because it doesn't look like what we expected it to be. I hope the Lord will really help me to give me utterance to really communicate what is in my heart. You see, that was the challenge with Eli. And I will talk about that a, a bit later on. You see, they had been praying. Israel had been praying. And the answer to the prayer was in Eli's house, and he didn't even know it. I will show you, show you in a short while. There's a scripture in the book of, I'll show you a couple of scriptures in Jeremiah 15, 17, verse 6. It says, for he shall be like a shrub in the desert. Don't say amen, please. He shall be like a shrub in the desert and shall not see when good comes, but shall inhabit the patch places in the wilderness. This is the profile of a cursed man. The difference between a blessed man and a cursed man is that the cursed man, you see, the, the, the opportunity comes, then they treat the opportunity badly. They lock the door on the opportunity. And he says, as a result of that, they may be praying. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. Yeah, we are all praying. And then God says, ah, advance, we've answered, we've sent angels three times. Praying for husband, praying for wife, praying for whatever. You are the one that chased them away. So yesterday, listen to this. We pray for speed. Using the scripture. And he says, and this day I came to, uh, to the well and said, <coughs> Oh Lord, God of my master, Abraham, if you will now prosper the way in which I go. Then he says, but before I had finished speaking in my heart, there was Rebecca coming out. I de I, it's not even a decree. I know that before the end of this conference, somebody's answer to prayer will meet them. Yeah. But the issue is, will you recognize it and how will you treat it? You see, your life enters <coughs> another dimension when you stop asking and start receiving the answers to your prayers. I, I don't think you got that. I will repeat it. Your life enters another dimension when you stop asking, eh? And then start receiving. When, you see, when you, when you keep asking, that was the problem with the apostles that were praying. They were in asking mode. Shaka, sha, Lord, release Peter. Lord, release Peter. Release him now. Release him. Peter was knocking at the door. Oh. I really pray, pray every single one of us will recognize the next move of God. Amen. And let me use some things to explain it and then we'll go you know, into some scriptures. Pastor Paju, one of the things that has not left my mind, yeah, in my memory, each time I remember, remember him, is a time when we were both campus fellowship pastors, and they had once some, some a group organized all campus fellowship pastors in Ibadan. I happened to be in Ibadan, okay, that's where my fellowship was. And they had it at the conference center uh, in UI. And these guys were moving in Syria. I'm talking movers and shakers, big boys. We were small boys. My fellowship was very small. It was in UCH. We, just, we actually just started. And they were moving in powerful science. So, you know, I just sat there and I'm like, okay, it's because I'm a campus fellowship pastor, I'm here. But I'm not these people. These people, I'm not in their league. And then 
while they were moving in serious signs and wonders and like things that till date I haven't seen some of those things happen yet. At the end of the conference, I just leaned the, uh, this way. And I thought, who did I see? Ah, Poppy. <laughs> he was in the corner just sitting down there. And listen to this. Very, just like this. I saw, ah, in my mind, eh, you are here too. <laughs> in the sense that, in my mind, I'm thinking, ah, Okay, so it's not just me, do you get? That is like, you know, where Ronaldo and Co are playing. Eh? And uh, tell me about it. Anyway, I don't know about Pastor Kodri, but me, I saw myself as a five-a-side pl- uh, uh, player. Do you understand? And Ronaldo, and then you are just there. As, eh, okay, one day, maybe. But 30 something years later, not one of those people. I mean, and this is with a lot of respect. Do I see them feature? Maybe one, maybe one, but not even, you know. But what I'm saying, trying to say is, in the midst, whatever they were praying for, there. And the Lord bring revival, do things, whatever. Their prayer points, the answer was sitting there. Some of them were sitting like this. The Bible talks about it in the book of Mark, chapter 8, verse 18. It said, Having eyes. Do you not see? Having ears, do you not hear? And then he says, and do you not remember? But let me take it a bit further. (laughs) May you not miss the next move of God. You see, I see videos of, some videos, and some of you don't understand, you know, I saw a video of, have you heard of Rod, Rodney Howard Brown? How many of you, put up your hand if you've heard of him. Okay, let's see. All right. Have you heard of T.D. Jakes? If you've heard of T.D. Jakes, put up your hand. Uh, more hands, isn't it? Okay. There is a minister's conference where Rodney Howard Brown was ministering. Look, Rodney Howard Brown, at that particular time, was the thing. And... I just mistake, mistakenly see T.D. Jakes sitting in the corner again, like this. Is this making sense? I just mistakenly, about three rows, like this. What, what, what about <laughs> Pastor Matthew Hashimolo? Uh, in, 19, in, the, in 1990, I was in England, you know, for a short while. So, for about three months, I was in England, and I used to go to a particular church, Victory Church. It's called London's Alive Church. And they had a conference. Some of the big speakers, uh, um, Reynard, um, no, Ray McCauley, Rick Godwin at the time, and all of that. And listen to this. It is... With hindsight, I don't recognize the black man that was sitting, because you couldn't miss him, his... his his unique signature haircut. He was sitting on the third row. Like this. Watch out for people sitting like this. <laughs> now I see everybody now doing like this. <laughs> I say all that to say that, what about Apostle Arome? Who, when he, I mean, he's my good friend, so, I mean, I know his history and his story. I, but when the first time he came, he said, he said ah, when he was speaking to me about coming here, he said, oh ah, okay, God, that conference, who? See, now that, this, I know my corner. <laughs> 
and, and you know, big speakers, this and, you know, blah, blah, blah. And he said, ah, I know. I said, there's, get, there's, one, there's one place that I sit down, so, 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 so. I, I must presume that when he used to sit down there, he sat down. <laughs> Beware of people who sit like... When the answer to your prayer comes, it will many times not look like what? And you could mistreat it. In fact, most times, you, you will mistreat it. And, and, and you know, the, the point I'm trying to make is, you know what? <laughs> Whatever you do. I spoke about my friend Satish. I met him. Different people are calling me now. Oh, that's your Indian friend. Blah, blah, blah. When I did, now he has 450,000. I didn't become his friend because he asked for 450,000. He didn't have one member when I knew him. And the question is so, what do you do? It's like, oh, so how do you prophetically recognize people? Yes, prophetically recognize, but just be nice to everybody. Invest in people. <laughs> Because you don't know who you may be shutting, shutting the door on Rhoda. Ah, may the Lord help me. Can you please uh, play the video I showed you? There, uh, I, I said, there's a gentleman who came to, to minister in our church who's heard of Travis Green. And when Travis Green came, he came with a bunch of people. Please play the video. Is it ready? Okay, I, I did this post some here. Watch. See the arrow. Give it or not, he's the one barking Travis Green at the Liberty Church. And this was about five years ago. This okay, stop it. Stop it, stop it, stop it. Who knows Shandla more? Okay. Look. Manage your seasons well. I didn't even know who that, you know. It was someone that said this. He came in 2017. I remember him. He was wearing one t-shirt and just jumping around like this. You may be a, back, a, a pastor today. It may be your protocol that will take your place home. Okay, let, let me not go in that direction. Sorry. <laughs> Do you get what I'm saying? What, what, I, what I'm saying is, and thank God for Travis Green's uh, ministry. What I'm saying essentially is, when you are in the season, it is a God-given gift. Manage it well. Treat people right. Okay, so how do you recognize so that you know and you don't miss it and all of that? How do you know these things prophetically? It says, behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? So declare it. Say, God will do a new thing. Tell your neighbor. Say, God will do a new thing. It says, now it shall spring forth. Which means it's not going to do it in 10 years. It's going to do it now. But then it says, shall you not one I never say NIV says, shall you not what? Perceive it. What this means is that the new thing is being done, but will you miss it when it comes? Can I have one person please as my yes? I want to talk about hearing from God. So we're, we're, we're great at answering, um, asking um, answers, petitions. Lord, do this. What are you saying? Blah, blah, blah. The reason why people, one of the reasons why, you know, many people miss the answers to their prayers when it comes is because they have only one way of hearing from God. And God is not a monolinguist. He doesn't speak, he doesn't even speak English. 
and he doesn't speak in one way. In fact, God is, is, is the master at varying the way he speaks so that he doesn't become a formula. The reason why I'm saying this is because I work in the prophetic. And it is easy to say, oh, this is, you know, he will, he, will, he, will, he will just come from another dimension. So he wants you to, it's relationship. He doesn't want you to, to start a routine or ritual. So, a little prophetic class here. And he says, watch this. Now, he's not my wife. Oh. I have to say it's, you, 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 because somebody, you, they can just take this portion on the, on the clip and put it on YouTube. Pastor says, do you understand? My wife is in London, I'm missing her, she's there. <laughs> mm-hmm. So, my wife wants to communicate with me. Maybe we go out to dinner, or, or, or I mean, we, we go out with some, to, to, to visit some guests. And she wants to communicate with me. She can communicate with me by, you know, she, I, I'm, I'm, I'm distracted, and she wants to talk to me by saying something to me, isn't it? Uh, saying, Shola, it's time to go. Okay? And, but for me to, to, to receive that, my air needs to be, isn't it? And there are many husbands, the wife is trying to say, it's time to go, or you are talking too much, or don't eat. Huh? <laughs> Let's not eat here. <laughs> Who knows what I'm talking about? If you're married, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> and, and she can't say it to you, but she's smiling. They say, do you want to eat? And you didn't like this, you know. <laughs> so, <laughs> that, that, that's, so one way is for her to say it, and, but for me to hear. If I'm not hearing that one, she will, she will wait till what? I look. Then she will use the... Uh-huh, like, no you too. There's one way the eye... Uh, let's not eat here or, <laughs> do, do you get what I'm saying? Or let's be going no more. That's two sight. Then, if she's been trying to get my eye, I didn't, she, didn't, I, I didn't, she didn't catch my eye, and her feet is long enough, she'll do what? Touch. Let's be going home. <laughs> Isn't it? And there's another way. There are sometimes, come behind me, please, and just put your hand, uh, your hand behind my, uh, cover my eyes. Cover my eyes, please. You are allowed. <laughs> you will not fall down. <laughs> okay, see. And, and she could do this, and it's like, oh, trying to say, guess who? You know what? And I don't know who this is, but you know what? I smell her perfume. And I say, I know, it's you, Bimbo. Essentially, that is a fast track class in the prophetic. The prophetic, for me, is an intimate relationship with God. Such that he, he, he's always trying to catch my attention. He's always trying to catch your attention. God is always wanting to speak. And unless you are close enough to him to know his, his language, if my wife is trying to say something to me, you will not know. But I will know because I live with her. Uh, tell two, three people next to you, say, I hope you are understanding this. Say, say, I hope you're understanding this. Say, I really hope you're understanding this. So that you don't become a rudder and lock out your answers. Okay, let's clap for him, please. Thanks. <coughs> so, let me show you the scripture so you understand. Job 33 verse 14 says, For God may speak in one way or in another, yet man does not perceive it. If God has told you there, that there are many ways he speaks. And, you know, and that it is easy not to know, to perceive. In a dream, in a vision of the night, when deep sleeps fall upon men, while men are slumbering. 
You know, for many years, I had, you see, growing up as a Christian, I was open to various, you know, whatever. I'm sure most of you. Of course, there's a lot of junk out there. And somebody, I met some guy who told me, God never, God doesn't speak to dreams again. And he's, he's, he's over with it in the New Testament. I said, really? And that's how he introduced Jesus. That's how we protected Jesus from, 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 from Herod. That's how, you know, that's how he one told Joseph, don't divorce your, your wife. I said, oh. And then I said, and there are different scriptures, you know, and all of that. Now, what I'm saying is this. You know what? The God, the Holy Spirit is a gentleman. He will never force any way on you. If you say this is, uh, he doesn't speak anymore, it's okay. If he says it's only tongues, he, look, do you know that there are some people who, are, they abuse us about tongues? Not some, plenty. <laughs> Meanwhile, that tongues, I, I found out recently that pastor is doing a teaching on tongues, you know, a, a series. I mean, I haven't had time to, you know, but I'm sure it's, 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 it's powerful. Because that's the gateway. But some people, but you know what? The Lord will just say, don't worry, I love those people like that. I, as in the people who are abusing you. <laughs> you know, it's okay, this is where you want to stop, it's all right. But listen to this. The old usually mocks the new. Let me explain. And this is why you must be careful so that you don't get to a place where God has brought the answer to your prayer and you are mocking it. Oh, you say, how? Oh. Listen to this. Acts chapter 2, verse 13 to 15 to 16. Others mocking said, they are full of new wine. For these are not drunk, as you suppose. This is Peter speaking. Since it is only the third hour of the day. But this is what was spoken by what? Prophet Joel. The Holy Ghost came, you, you, you remember, like a rushing mighty wind. And then the people around interpreted it as uh, those drunkards. And Peter said, no, 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 no. I have the picture here at the airport. This is that. This is what we're expecting. This is what Joel spoke about. This is the visitation. I can give you numerous examples, yeah? It, it is so easy. You see, if, you're, if, you're going to, if you want to keep sensitive to God, you have to make sure you protect your heart from a critical spirit. Don't be too quick to judge anything. You see some people shaking like, or some people doing whatever, some people doing prophetic. I say, all these people, all these people, you know what? What you do is that you have just locked the door on Rhoda and you've locked yourself out of that thing. It is better to just do this. Wait and watch. There was one time I asked somebody who was very prophetic, one of my mentors, and I, I said to you know, I've heard about some people from some place, they're prophetic, they do this, they do that, they do that. I said, ah, a day of God or a day of... I was shocked. I thought the person would tell me, ah, they are using divination. I said, they are of God. I said, really? He says, they are, they are just not trained. It says, it says the gift is from God. They are just not trained. They are, and listen to this. Anyway, let's, let me not go in that direction. Eli discerned and judged Hannah wrongly. He thought Hannah, Hannah, Samuel's mother, was drunk. So Eli said to her, how long will you be drunk? Put your wine away from you. But Hannah answered and said, no, my Lord, I am a woman of what? Sorrowful spirit. I have drunk neither wine nor intoxicating drink, but uh, ha have poured out my soul before the Lord. 
Eli called what God was about to do a drunkard. Are you seeing the correlations here? What do we do when God begins to shift? There's, there, there, there's, there's something about Eli and Samuel. Eli is the older move. Samuel is the new thing God is about to do. The old must be prudent and careful to not put any labels on the new that is coming. The, the new also need to be wise, not to say, we are the ones, and not to say, ah, they, they've missed it. Ha. Huh. Hmm. Look, there are, some, there are some people I can never speak against, even if I think they are, I will just do like this. The reason why is this. Even if somebody was, has missed it, but was used by God before, there is something that they know that they can teach you. Is this making sense? In fact, God does it in such a way to, to humble you and to keep it hum, humble. Look, <laughs> the, one of, some of my greatest treasured people are very old people. Both in the physical and also spiritual. Look, I don't joke with the relationship with my, with my mentor, professor of cardiothoracic surgery. I don't, I don't mess around with it. I also don't joke with the, a particular man of God. I said, ah, somebody put his thing online. Two people viewing it. I said, these people, this world doesn't know anything. <laughs> this, both this prophet, do you know, this prophet was the one that taught me how to say, do you know that there's a difference between God speaks when the, the Holy Spirit speaks and when angels speak to you. I said, eh, I thought everything was God. And then he just showed me one thing and he made the difference in my hearing from God on some instances. Now, the truth of the matter is, to be honest with you, it doesn't make a, a big difference like that so far you obey it. Do you get? But I will show you something later because, you know, because of what he told me, that little information, it changed things for me. The other mentor I'm talking about also told me, said, look, Shola, you know, if you do this at this time and if you do this and you do this, you will. He just said it casually. <laughs> the thing has changed my life. Okay. Now, let's move on very quickly. Let me say this. When God shifts, tell your neighbor, move. I don't know about you. I do not want to be where God used to be. I don't know if you are hearing what I'm saying. I do not want to be where God used to be. Because people will be celebrating. People will be, people will be, you, you get. And let me tell you something about the fan, the electric fan. When they remove the plug, what is still? So people will still be attending the conferences. People will still be whatever. People, but you just give it a few years. It is the people who did like this that they did not recognize at, at that conference that we, that's the new place. My brothers and sisters, there's a quotation we must never forget. It says, history repeats itself. It always does because no one listens. You didn't get that. History is always repeating, repeating, which means if you don't learn from somebody else's mistake, there's a saying that the death that killed your uncle is warning you. 
So what we're going to do very quickly for the next whatever is look through the Acts of the Apostles because it will teach us, you know, sometimes when we talk about this, it's, oh, yeah, you, you are always in spirit, this and that. But the, 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 the Bible, yeah, you want to talk about church growth, there's no other better book than Acts of the Apostles. And we, I can... We can teach you about track growth principles, structure, this and that. But let me tell you, you can have structure and not have life. And the growth comes when the spirit moves. And so, listen to this. Acts of Apostles starts, Acts chapter 1. So we're, going, we're doing like expository teaching here. Quick one. Acts chapter 1. Somebody say Acts 1. Acts 1, 8. You shall receive what? Power when the Holy Ghost comes upon, upon you, and you shall be what? Witnesses of me in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, Ottomans. That gave the general plan that this is, the Holy Spirit said, this is the, this is the way you, so hold your map. Acts chapter 2, the Holy Ghost came. Okay? Then Peter looked at the photograph and said, okay, this is that. It has come. Eh? Some people missed it. But the first thing I want to talk about is it came as a rushing mighty wind. So, descending the wind. Remember I said the Spirit of God speaks in different ways. So, we have to be sensitive. What is he doing right now? And so, the first thing he came, it was like a rushing mighty wind. And, and so, the wind is different things. For sake of time, I will just go very quickly. There's the wind of the spirit, yeah, which is what we just spoke about. And some people missed it. They mocked it, okay? But there's also winds, trends in society, which the Holy Spirit brings and allows. And in this instance, um, uh, for sake of time, when Pentecost happened, it was at a time of celebration where people came from all over different nations. Now, it shows that God is a strategic God, isn't it? Because God wanted to do something. They didn't have internet in those days, so he brought everybody into one place. So that the Holy Ghost, he brought everybody to a, a, a conference. Poof! So that they could take it and everywhere else. Listen to this. God uses significant trends. Okay? So, COVID, lockdown. How many of you know that there are some people we did not know before lockdown that showed up after lockdown? It was a move of God. And that moved. Eh, there, there was, before then, eh, there were some people who, ah, if you are going to make it in ministry, you have to, you have to, you have to know them. You have to go through them. You know, if they don't endorse you, COVID shuts that down. And some people who know, they just came up and from little rooms, people said. Number two. Problems are usually hidden opportunities too. Are you here? Problems are hidden opportunities. So in Acts chapter 6, we see that, you know, there, there was complaints of, the, of feeding the Jew, you know, the Hellenists and all of that stuff, and there was a problem with whatever. And in all of that, the apostles just went and prayed. And then, let's appoint so, so, and so. That was what gave birth to administration in the church. And then the church grew. Do you know right now, some of you, your ministries, not even some of you, all of us, the, the problems you are going through in your ministry is an indication that a shift is here. Okay, now my time, I have to use my time wisely now. The Lord uses circumstances. Let me, let me give you an example of what I mean by circumstances. Um, a, a, a couple of months ago, somebody said to me, one of my church members, Pastor, I think you should go on this workshop. I said, what was it? He called it one funny name. 
He didn't have any, <laughs> I wasn't sure whether I was leadership, psychology, blah, blah. But he, he, I trust the guy. He said, I said, he's a pastor, I think. He said, and he's, he's, he's run by a particular professor who is retiring. This is the last time he's going to run it. So I, he said, I, I think you, anyway. So I didn't know what to expect. When he said professor, the guy named the name of the university, I said, okay, let's go. And it was about four days at that particular time. And when we got in there, I was ready to take notes on structure, management, blah, blah, blah. The guy said, we should not take any notes. For four days, no notes. He didn't give a lecture. There were about 14 of us on the course, and every single one of us, you have one hour to talk about ourselves. I don't, have, I, don't, I don't have the time. It was just so, it was so uncomfortable for me that you are also not allowed to use your phone, touch your phone at any time. And I was like, the person who told me to go on the course, in during the thing, I said, if, when I get back, if I, <laughs> does, he, does he think I don't have, I, I was so, anyway, to cut a long story, they were all white except one lady. And most of them non-Christian. Another day I will tell you the full story of this thing. At the end of the day, I was like, what am I doing here? It was after the thing that I then realized that, man, at the end of the, that four days, the, the professor asked us, he said, so what, what did you come here for? And do you feel it was fulfilled? I couldn't, I just wanted to be polite. I said, I came here to learn structure, so, 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 so. I said, well, you know, because I want my church to go. <laughs> anyway, long story short, they didn't believe in church. They didn't whatever, nothing like that. It was at the end of the thing, one girl, a Russian lady, who told me on the first night, we said, what do you do? I said, so, so, so. Said, you believe in that rubbish? Yes. You said, it's just the one, she's Russian. And then, so, from that moment, throughout the four days, I respected myself. We didn't talk to each other. <laughs> you know? And anyway, long story short, after I said this thing, when that professor asked, was your whatever fulfilled? I said, oh, so, 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 so. At the end of, as she, she just tapped me on the, what I said, Shola, if you ever need help with the organizing of your church. You can call me, I will help you. Alisa, huh? Russian atheist, you will not believe. We arranged an appointment. She, she and her husband started, I don't know if you've heard of TK Max or TJ Max. In, in, they, they type in Russia and they have about, they, in, within three years, they set up four, what am I saying? About 80 stores. What she sat down and showed me in one hour. <laughs> one day, I'm still processing it. I will, I will share it with you. Who would have ever thought that what I was praying about, God will use a, a white Russian atheist? Number three is persecution. Know when it is time to move. Jackpot. <laughs> God uses circumstances like that to say it's time to go to Samaria. Now, not everybody, but that was, hey, it is time to move to the nations. Then God uses the discerning of voices the Bible says in Acts 8, now an angel of the Lord spoke to Philip saying, arise, go down to, south, uh, to, to the south, blah, 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 to, to the place called Gaza. It is a desert. Are you, are you seeing different ways through which God speaks? And here, sometimes we are waiting. Eh, 
I haven't heard anything. I haven't heard anything. But God has used something to tell you, move. Listen to this. How we talk about SGLT and co. Yeah? But do you know that per SGLT, all he had in, in the city of Bradford, where he lived as a plumber, was go to Elisha. And somebody else confirmed it at an apostolic meeting. They prophesied. And they said, God is calling him to go to Africa. And then he named his dog Elisha. He arrived in Elisha. Long story short, eh? the great voices and people that we listen to the W.F. Kumui, Pastor Adeboye, um, Archbishop Idahosa, I can name many, many more. They all used to visit Pat Elton. I think it was something like once a week or something like once a month and sit down with him. And those people have become the, as it were, those were the people who sat like this under him. And those are the people who are now in the forefront. The next is uh, sending out leaders in Acts 13. The next is, is in verse 8, discerning dreams and visions. If you despise dreams and visions, you may miss something. I don't know, maybe I should end with this. Let me, let me end with this story very quickly. The, the, the time is short, but um, should I? Okay. There's a dimension that God wants some of us have been praying, why have these negative things happened? Why? Do you know what? God has probably been speaking to you, but you have been uh, saying, no, no, uh, all those animals in the dreams, all those this, all those, oh, blah, blah, blah. Look, stop abusing those things. They, they are probably things that God is using as code to tell you, deal with this thing. I had a dream where It was the first time I would see an angel in the dream. He tapped my feet while I was sleeping and then did like this and told me to come. And I went downstairs. As I went downstairs, he pointed at the door and I saw an open door. And then as I looked this way, I saw armed robbers coming with weapons. And then I realized, ah, the angel has come to warn me. So then I saw a relative of mine in a room sleeping by the door. And he was... Should I warn him? Should I lock the door or should I run? That's when I woke up. And so that showed me I needed to pray. I started praying, praying. The next week, long story short, I had another dream where armed robbers came again. This time they took this particular relative outside and they took him somewhere to beat him. And by the time I got to the garage, when I looked, I was there late. The, the, that person was hung. And I was, that triggered something in me. I need, I need to pray. So I was saying, I need to pray, I need to pray. Two days later, I got a phone call that that relative had a stroke. Without saying any more, because my time is gone, there are some things that could have been avoided. And when they happen, we say, why, why, God? What happened? What? God, is, I was speaking to you, but you did not perceive it. May we recognize when God speaks. Let's stand up as we pray. I want to spend the next one minute us praying that we do not miss God. We do not miss God. Open your mouth. I want us to pray as pastors, as leaders, that we will be sensitive in our spirit. My, that Lord, when your answers come, we will not miss him because we are limited and narrowed. We are, we, we are obsessed with the way it has always been done. We don't even want to offend the people who are friends with us. That, and oh, that this is now how this person is hearing God. Open your mouth and say, Lord, activate my spirit. Make me sensitive. Help me recognize it. Mantala, help me fulfill destiny. Robotos Kotobara. Zetekete. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. I'm sure you know that prayer point is something you need to take 
and continue to push with. Um, ah, sorry. A few books left. I was actually terribly ill. I have been for the last seven days. High fever. It's been, it was by faith that I came here. I'm saying, look, I've not been ill like this. Every day since I've come here, I had to stand up by faith. Pastor Kojo called me on the, when I was on the way to here, but oh, so, 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 so. I, 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 my wife said, tell him that you are ill. I just, I said, let me practice what we preach. And the Bible says, and as they went, they were healed. As I got to the airport, I had strength. But listen to this. <laughs> I believe that that warfare was because there is somebody here that the enemy was trying to prevent from hearing something and entering to something. But listen to this. He has failed and you are going to succeed. God bless you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oh. Uh, yeah, yeah. okay. The eyes of my heart